Welcome to our Orange Power Podcast. Casey Kendrick along with the head coach of the Cowgirls, Coach J.C. Hoyt. And Coach, you know, I thought it'd be kind of fun to, if we looked at where the season is right now and where things have gone for you guys before we get into a, a couple of ball games. You guys, and again, I know if I say you, you're going to say, well, my staff and my kids. So, right, your mm-hmm. team um, slayed the Bears in Waco. You guys have slayed uh, a long drought with Texas, and you have now beaten your mentor. <laughs> That's a lot of slayed dragons in the mm-hmm. first half of your first season at Oklahoma State. Put that in perspective for us. I'm just proud. I, I love I love our team. Um, my staff is amazing. Um, you know, it's just, it's really about the journey for me. Um, I'm really big on that, just trying to stay in the present and soak in every second. Um, year one is special anywhere you are. And um, I just want to make the most of it. And our team is so unique in having so many fifth years that really, uh, to be honest, other than just, you know, laying the foundation and my love for Oklahoma State, everything I want for Cowgirl basketball. I so badly want to send those fifth years out on um, a, a, you know, just a, on a high for their career and to play in March. Um, that's something that they all came here for. Um, they understood that. We understood that in the recruiting process. And uh, that's a, a real strong driving force for me. Well, and the other part of that is, I mean, as great as that is, there's still a lot of dragons to slay, yes. right? I mean, there's still yes. bedlam and there's chances to get sweeps and there's chances to avenge other things and, and obviously the Big 12 tournament. So there's lots of dragons out there, but you guys have been wielding a pretty good sword so far. <laughs> we have. Um, I, I like our chances against anyone that we're playing. And I tell our team all the time, you know, I, I believe that you're one of the most feared teams to play in the conference and you need to carry yourself with that confidence. Um, I know I have that confidence and belief in them and uh, it's just fun seeing them figure it out. You know, you said to post game after the uh, Kansas State game, uh, you kept saying, well, I, I mean, the word that just comes to mind is proud. You've already used it here. You talked about proud. Uh, you know, this last week was a challenge, and this particular game with Kansas State, even more of a challenge because you weren't fully uh, loaded with everybody available and, and fully healthy. So the pride factor is is obviously very real for you. Absolutely. I mean, I just I, – I can't really speak to some of the challenges and adversity that our team has faced, but all I can say is this team is tough. They are tough. They never fold. Uh, whatever you know has been thrown at us, they just keep finding ways to respond. And not that we've won every game, um, but we are winning with the response that we have to step up, step in the batter's box, um, not back down, and just keep grinding. And I love our grit. I love our toughness. And I think that's going to take us really far. Well, and even to the point where you asked your team prior to uh, the game this week, we're not fully loaded. I need a little more. I don't need. Mm-hmm. I don't need one person to take a, the whole load, but I need a little more here and a little more here. And you really recognized your kids in post game because that's exactly what you got was a little more here, a little more there, which added up to a total victory. Well, they definitely understood what it was going to take. You know, um, being a shorthanded, and yeah, I ask everyone, um, everyone, coaches included, you know, before the game. Raise your hand if you can just give a little bit more. It uh, doesn't have to all fall on one person's shoulders. Um, that's not who we are anyway. We're a team that does things by committee. Um, but everyone stepped up to the challenge. They did indeed. And so so let's talk, Coach. Let's talk a little bit about uh, your week. The first, you know, Obviously, it started with uh, a game in the Lloyd Noble Center. And, you know, what I like about that game is, again, it's Bedlam, right? It's your first Bedlam game. Um, you guys went into it with a, a really big mindset of understanding what it is and teaching your kids that, and you came away with, we got to get more fans. <laughs> I, I mean, it, yeah. it, you learned something in the game in the 40 minutes, but there was a very resounding feeling I think you had coming out of that that we got to go. I'm competitive in everything. I want <laughs> cowgirl basketball. I want Oklahoma State to be the golden standard in everything that we do. And um, I'm not someone who's going to be content, um, really, even when we are the gold standard, <laughs> to be honest. But uh, I think the, those two road trips, you know, Iowa State um, always has a great women's basketball fan base. Um, OU uh, brought more than what they normally have, really what they have in the last 10 years from my understanding. But 
when you go into that atmosphere and you can feel the impact that it has on you as um, you know, a, an opponent, you just realize, man, I really want to do this for us. I, I want other teams to feel this when they step into GIA. Um, I want the opponent to feel it. I want our team to be able to feed off that energy. I want the officials to feel pressure from our fans. I, I want it all. Um, and I believe that our girls deserve that as well. You know, I mean, they're going to put their, their heart and soul out on the line and they're going to give it everything they've got. And um, I just think to take this thing where we want to go, that's something that, you know, is really needed. Well, and so in that game, uh, terrific effort. Uh, I mean, offensively was incredible, obviously, 93 mm -hmm. points. And, you know, the most incredible part about maybe that game was that, you know, foul trouble is going to happen. Depth issues are always going to be part of what we need, and we need our bench to step up. And your bench had 47 points. That is stepping up in a monstrous way. Oh, I was so proud of the way they stepped up. Um, Anna Gret was amazing. You know, she continues to just keep getting better and better. She's playing her best basketball, really, of her career right now. Um, but I'm excited for her because I know this is just the beginning. Uh, our, our team, you know, Cassidy, TJ, they all just stepped up in huge ways. Um, we, we had a lineup out on the floor we haven't had ever, <laughs> even in practice, because it's, you know, it doesn't make any sense, but that's the position we were put in. And man, um, they just battled. Uh, they had each other's backs. And uh, really, you know, they, they put us in the position to win the game at the end. And um, they, that's what it takes, right? That's what good teams do. That's what I told them is, you know, when your back's against the wall, um, different people have to step up, and they certainly did. Yeah, I remember one point Cassidy Lapp is in front of the scorer's table, and I go, she must be getting ready to come in for Trinity Jackson for TJ. And she didn't come in for TJ. She came for somebody. I don't even remember who she came in for, but those two were on the floor at the same time. And it actually worked really well there for a while. It created some problems. And now it's obviously got you know challenges on the other end. But, uh, but man, you know, the combinations, again, it, it wasn't as textbook as you like, but your kids just found a way. You talk about resiliency all the time. They just found a way to make it work for a while. Yeah, you know, um, really – it kind of started for us this summer. We t we've got a, a little saying on our team. It's called sudden change. And uh, we talk about, you know, when, when that sudden change happens, whether it's, you know, something in our life, something off the court, uh, we know sudden change is going to happen on the court, whether that's a, a team going on a 9-0 run or foul trouble or whatever that may be. Um, just responding in a way that, you know, we just do the next best thing and we don't fall apart. We stay neutral come together and uh, we had a lot of sudden change <laughs> that game and uh, just couldn't be more proud of their response. So that one was a, you know, again, it was a, a near miss in at the Lloyd Noble Center. We've talked about learning from losses, learning from wins too, but obviously in those losses, what are you going to do with that? How's it going to carry you over? And, you know, I, obviously in Hilton and LNC, well, I we talked a lot this week about how different you were now versus the first time you played Kansas State. Well, I was excited to see what Anna Grant was going to get to do. Mm -hmm. She was not available for this one. So put all that together, and now that adversity is back there again. But what you guys learned in the first one versus them and what you learned in that tough road game and road week you had obviously translated well the second time around with the Wildcats. Yeah, we, we want to have a growth mindset in everything we do, whether we win, whether we lose. And, um, you know, we, we did. We learned a lot in all of those games that you just mentioned. Um, and we learned different things, you know. And uh, some of it was where we need to be better. Some of it was, man, we're really good at this. Let's, let's keep pushing this. And um, our kids, they're just, they're motivated. They're bought in. And uh, it's just so fun to watch them just, you know, figure it out and uh, just kind of really embrace the journey of learning. And I told them after last week, you know, Society tells you, fans tell you, media tells you, um, everyone around you is telling you if you win, you're a good team. If you lose, you're a bad team. And that's just simply not true. And we're a really good basketball team. And I think our team, you know, was really able to understand, okay, if we can go into those environments and those atmospheres and do what we did, um, we should take confidence from that. We shouldn't hang our heads. And um, I mean, I'm, I'm competitive, right? Like I don't, I'm not saying I, I don't like losing. I hate it more than anyone. But um, you can't let that, you know, just knock you down and, and keep you down. And that's not who we are. That's not who I am. That's not who this team is. And um, I just I, I'm having so much fun just watching them get up 
and get back to it. Well, you know, and again, I'm obviously on the air when you're doing your post game with your team, but I get the opportunity to go in and watch OSU Max, which, by the way, you need to get your subscription to that. <laughs> but uh, I saw what you guys talked to your team about, and that was – uh, about the journey, right? I mean, you again, the things you say here is not something secret. You tell them something different in the locker room. We have been able to see those moments because the cameras are there. And that's one of the things you've been very intentional about is also the journey. Listen, this for those fifth-year seniors, this is the end of your journey for NCAA. Um, and you've been very intentional. And, and, and I, the thing that really stood out to me, I guess, most of what you said was, we don't have much time together. Mm. This we don't listen. We we came together. You know, we're going to be together for twelve months. That we're going to be together for the rest of our lives, in in some ways. But this team and the this group, because of the age of, of where we are, I thought that was very good. And I think I think that does set a tone for those kids to go. Man, I'm not. I got next game. I don't care who it is. I've got to give everything I've got so that we get to where we want to because this is my last chance. Yeah, um, I think we all feel a sense of urgency when we understand time. Um, we've got our hourglass sitting right there <laughs> um, in our in our film room where we're at, and um, you know, I, I show it. It's it's a visual symbol of time is running out, and the less time you have, the faster it goes. So let's not have any regrets. Let's enjoy every second. Let's enjoy the the tough times. Let's enjoy the good times um, because ultimately it's. It's about the journey. It's it's about who you're with, and um, I, this is a family. I mean, I, this this group is so special, and I want to savor every second with them. I think that they feel the same way, and um, you know, time is running out. I mean, we're at the end of January now, yeah. and um, so I think that you know, sometimes when things are going hard, uh, when things are going tough, it's easy to you want time to speed up and. I, uh, I just had to bring him back and say, listen, we're not doing that. We're, t yeah. we're going to enjoy this and we're not going to waste any time um, having any regrets about how we handle things or our attitude. Uh, we just we want to find joy in it. And um, it was so fun watching our team do that against K-State. Well, we've seen it. Now you're 4-4 four and four in the league. And it's funny because I talked about your positioning at 4-4. Four and four, Like, man, you guys are a half game out of fourth in this league. And you go, nobody wants to be 5 in this <laughs> league. That was your answer. So we know that competitive nature. But now then you go to Texas and a chance to sweep the Longhorns. Um, they've got a new facility. Obviously, they're drawing good crowds. It's going to be very tough. But that's another. That's a team ahead of you right now. So a very important game and another milestone potential out there this weekend. Yeah. Uh, anytime you have an opportunity for a sweep, it's it's a you know just a blessing. And um, we've positioned ourselves really well. Uh, Texas is playing really well right now, and obviously they're going to be motivated. But you know, one thing I'm really finding a lot of joy in. Uh, personally and just watching our players is because we have so many transfers they really haven't been at this level you know they haven't been in an atmosphere like I know we're about to walk into um, in Texas and so just kind of em embracing it enjoying it you know um, it it's fun I mean it's it's fun quieting a crowd it's fun <laughs> um, you know just having those those moments together and um, even the, the hard times because those force you to come together as a team and so uh, you know, we're going to go out there, see what happens, and give it heck like we always do. Going to throw it out there one more time. You faced your old uh, coach, Jeff Mitty, four times, or four halves. <sighs> Three halves, he's called a timeout within two minutes. <laughs> I, I mean, it's that's quieting the crowd and good stuff. Coach, it's been a fun journey. Let's keep it going, and uh, let's enjoy the ride uh, down to Austin, Texas. Let's do it. All right. Hey, we appreciate you guys tuning in, and that's going to do it for us. For Coach Hoyt, I'm Casey Kendrick. We'll see you guys next time on the Orange Power Podcast. <laughs>